Hello and welcome to Just Keep Writing. A podcast for writers. By writers. To keep you writing. I'm Marshall. I'm Nick. Oh, I'm Maurice. Wait, I'm Maurice. I thought I went next. Oh, no, that's right. You went next. <laughs> I'm, I'm Maurice, though. <laughs> and I'm Will. And that voice that declared himself Maurice is Maurice Broadus. Welcome back to the show, sir. How the heck you been? <laughs> I, obviously, smooth as butter. I'm like, this is a well-oiled machine uh, that I'm just jumping in on. <laughs> and I'm leaving all that in. It's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> well, seriously, welcome back. It's wonderful to see you. I, I, I was, unfortunately, didn't get to see you at, at uh, Worldcon. We were talking about that before we started recording. And I just, I, I, I love chatting with you, man. So I'm just, just welcome back. I appreciate you. Well, you know me. This is like my home away from home. I think I've done you guys' podcast more than... Uh, I think the only podcast I've done more than you guys was literally my season on writing excuses. Okay. <laughs> but well, we're we'll closely, break that closely soon. approaching that number. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm going to turn it over to Will. He's a little lag on his end. So hopefully I don't, I can edit this out and it'll be, I'll be good, but um, we're going to turn it over to Will and he's going to let us know what we're talking about and why we have Maurice on this week. Uh, yeah, so we are going to be talking about Maurice's uh, new book, uh, Sweep of Stars. And Maurice, my first question is, I want you to describe the writing of this book in three words. They can be completely unrelated. Oh, goodness. You know, like I was told when I was asked this question, I should have known this was coming. And, and Maurice's face episodes. is funny because you should have known this is coming. <laughs> you should have known this is coming. Uh, all right, three words describing the writing of this book. Okay. Improvisational, world building, love. No, community. Community. That's right. Ooh, I'm going with okay. those three. Community, world building, improvisational. Okay. So let's let's unpack those words. Improvisate imp- Improvisational. What about that word came to mind? Describe it. So, uh, actually, it's, it's a couple of different couple of different ways. So, one is the whole idea of jazz. Um, jazz uh, becomes a, a bit of a, a touch point for me as I'm, I'm writing this book. I mean, for one thing, I'm, when I'm writing the book, I'm literally listening to I mean, what were the big ones I was listening to. I know I was listening to Miles Davis, uh, Bitches Brew. I was listening to, uh, oh, daggone, my Spotify list was just, you know, it was all, basically all these jazz uh, jazz folks, everything from Sun Ra to, uh, uh, oh, Kamasi Washington. Um, I've just listened to a, a lot of jazz because that sort of informed, I don't know, the mind space I was writing in. To, uh, so that, that was a big part of it. And then imp- the other part of the improvisational was just this whole, I'm just going to do whatever pops up in the moment. Uh, like, so every time a new chapter would begin, I was just like, you know, like, every, I mean, every part about it is like, what POV should I do? Ah, I don't know this, you know, it, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, it's like different POVs, different lead characters, different tenses, different, oh, different persons uh, that, that, uh, that uh, in, in terms of, I've, in terms of how I told it. So it made for a fun writing process. It's just it made for a very painful, painful edits to keep everything consistent. So what about world building? So world building. Oh, so this, that's kind of tied to community. Uh, but the world building. So let me start by by saying I, I uh, one of my jobs, uh, I work for a, a, an organization called the Kepper Institute. And, uh, and it's a grassroots community organization that does, uh, I mean, mostly we... Are, are using social uh, entrepreneurial type experiences to teach young people, you know, different concepts about community wealth building. I mean, that's the, that's the big picture idea of, of what, what the organization does. Um, but we end up doing that through just multiple different lenses. But uh, one of the things that I end up doing in terms of the world building is I started having coffee with the, uh, one of the cap co-founders of the organization. His name is uh, Imhotep Adisa. And, uh, and so he and I would get together every Saturday morning and we would just dream together. Uh, although dreaming together looked an awful lot like us arguing esoteric topics also, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Like, and, and, uh, and it, so each Sunday I'd come armed with some random question, like how, how would AI, uh, work alongside community? 
Um, or, you know, what would, what could schooling look like? The, our, our school system is not where we would want it to be. We, you know, but if we had a chance to, to start it over from scratch, what would our, our school system look like? And so, um, I, we would just do this every Saturday morning and that's how the world got built, to be honest with you, is just a, a sort of just, you know, batting these ideas back and for, forth, uh, trying to figure out, you know, the, the work that we were doing, uh, what, what would it look like if we won? You know, if, if uh, what what's the thing we're, we're working towards? So uh, that was that was how our world building was, was, was. Well, that's how the world building got done for for this book. But just you know, I, I talk about just dreaming alongside my neighbors about what could be, and then writing about it. What about world building? You said world building and community goes hand in hand. Is there anything else that you want to say about community as far as one of the words? Oh yeah, so community specifically. Um, I mean, because there's one aspect where I'm just, I felt like I'm just dreaming alongside community, but there's another aspect where it's just like, no, I'm I'm inspired by my community. So I'm I'm watching the work gets done, how the work gets done, people doing the work, how the work is getting done, and just the the work of some of the people in my neighborhood, in my in my community. Um, that's just inspiring. Uh, uh, you know, there's just different figures. I'm just watching, just going, man, y'all are just awesome. Let me just write about how awesome y'all are, and and, and that's. <laughs> that sort of there's a certain level of just community love that just hopefully bubbles through the whole book where I'm just like, oh, man, I just love my people. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep writing about them. So now that we have the three words that kind of for writing the book, can you give everyone a pitch of the book? How would you describe this book? Well, the pitch was easy. It was uh, it's Black Panther meets The Expanse. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here right. for that, Maurice. I'm right. here for that. Uh, and that's I, when I say that's how the book sold. That's basically how the book sold because they were like, "You're going to write what? All right, yeah, we're in." <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. So my next question, then, I want you to describe um, the world building. What I found so interesting was the seven founding families. How did you? come up with those seven um, founding families and how did that guide your story to move forward? Um, actually, I didn't start with the seven founding families. Uh, the story originally started with uh, the HOVA unit um, and the, the HOVA unit being the, the group of uh, sort of the space military unit um, that that's exploring the other side of, uh, the Oren gate, which is this wormhole in, in, the, in the community, you know, every community should have a wormhole, you know, of course it's right. <laughs> and so, uh, and so the story actually started there. And, and my original thing was I was going to write a novel just about the Hova on the other side of the uh, galaxy, you know, exploring that, that sort of thing. And so with that in mind, I was like, all right, so what kind of world, would they have come from what sort of world would produce this, uh, this particular group of, of soldiers and, and how they operate. So then I started building this world and, uh, and, and I think as, as you've probably picked up in the course of our relationship together, I, I overdo my world building. I way overdo my world building. And, but like, it, I, oh, I also <laughs> overdid it. God, just like, I have built this huge world that's basically just there to launch this group into space. I'm going to get hammered <laughs> if I don't show more of this world. Uh, cause, uh, cause that's been something that's kind of haunted me throughout my career, but it's like, nah, I'm ahead of y'all this time. I'm going to have storylines that take place in the other parts of this world. So that, uh, so, so that I don't get hammered come uh, review time. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's how, that's how I end up starting, you know, what wanted to do all that, but the seven founding families, like I said, some some of it was inspired by uh, obviously my friends. I mean, I mentioned my friend Imo de Padisa, and so obviously that would be the Adisa family. He was the inspiration for the Adisa family. Um, but then it's just different figures, like partly in my community, and then partly by role, because um, I, I always had this like sort of amorphous idea of how the families got together, how they were chosen, and what's how they sort of fell into different roles in the community. Um, in fact, in some ways, I think of them as archetypes. So it's like, all right, this is the this sort of archetype of leadership here and this sort of archetype of leadership here. Um, and then uh, what it looks like to go ahead and form uh, 
form a community out of these different archetypes. The, the seven families, like I said, it started as sort of this vague idea, and I've sort of only fleshed it out because I've written so many short stories now in this world because it's 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 what I do, apparently. I, <laughs> yeah, every time I get stuck in the world-building question, I end up writing another short story so I can think it through. So I was like, why do I have this family? What does this family even do? Uh, and so then I started writing some of the stories that take place with that family. I'm like, oh, wow, oh, wow, this this makes perfect sense. I now understand this. So, you know, the family that's, uh, you know, sort of positions themselves in terms of their role in the church or the role in the, the community spirituality, the the families that are guardians of secret and deep knowledge, the the families that are, they see themselves in charge of security, um, you know, so di- different families have the sort of different strengths and not really strengths, but different things that they prioritize that they want their family to be about. So. Nick, you had a question? You're muted. Come on, people. I together. know. I know. Look, 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 look. Come on. I had to put my hand down and there was too many button clicks at the time. And I'm like nervous of background noise because Marshall's here. Um, so tra- look, I wanted to get this in before the next question and I, and I missed it, but I want to go back to the pitch. Okay. Okay. The Expanse meets Black Panther, right? Black Panther meets The Expanse. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> now that the book is, we're close to launch on the book. You've been mm-hmm. writing this for a while. I want to challenge you a little bit of this one because give me a better, give me a more in depth pitch on this one. What what is deeper to the root? Because now we started talking about seven families and stuff like that. Right. Um, can you do you have an expanded pitch on that one that you could give us? Yeah, I think what so, Nick's trying to say is what from each thing are you bringing in gotcha, and, gotcha. and using. <laughs> Right, I just I, I just want to hear a longer pitch. It's really <laughs> what it comes down to. Well, so basically you have this intergalactic black empire. Empire is uh, not quite the word I, I aim for because uh, because of some of the themes involved in the books. But for, for the sake of convenience, it's an intergalactic black empire. It's a pan-African uh, community. Uh, and they... Uh, and, and this stretches from... Uh, and it's uh, called Muungano. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. I've only actually only written that word uh, as, <laughs> as much of this book has just been written. So the idea of me trying to pronounce some of this stuff, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But uh, so we've got this uh, king, uh, community called uh, Moongano uh, and they it goes from the moon to parts of Mars to the moon of, of Titan uh, and uh, extending out to this uh, mining colony. And then perhaps uh, through the Oren Gate, which is the wormhole I talked about. So that that's Moon Gano. And uh so the with uh with Sweep of Stars, you basically follow them. there's three storylines basically. So one is uh follows the Hova, and then they've been sent, and that's the, the military unit, the, the defense corps of uh of Moon Gano. And uh and basically this group of ladies have been sent through the wormhole and they are exploring this planet on the other side of the wormhole. So that, that's storyline number one. Storyline number two is uh, takes place on the starship, the Cipher. Um, the Cipher is a starship powered by jazz music. Because <laughs> why awesome. not? Why not? <laughs> um, and so their, their captain uh, is, is is in charge of. I mean, it's a research vessel, and so so their job is to conduct research. Uh, Titan is the main research planet, but the Cipher is one of their is their lead research vessel, and so. We, we're following the adventures of, of the cipher, um, and then the last uh, last storyline follows uh, sort of like uh, the politics of uh, what of the succession of what succession looks like in, in the kingdom of uh, of Moongano. So, so we have issues of of succession, issues of space exploration, and then uh, this military uh, sci fi element also. Nice. I'm and, and, here for all of it. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, Nick. I, I Go mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pre-ordered. I've been waiting on this one for a while. I remember when you first sold it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I think you told me that the week of. So, well, but I mean, also consider this: where where we all met, uh, being the writing excuses uh, ship. I was literally writing the first three chapters of this book there. No That's shit. what I was well, doing the whole time. 2018, okay. right? Right. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. Man, it's wow. crazy to see it's full circle now. Mm-hmm. Our, our relationship mm-hmm. is full circle. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of 2018, uh, we had a conversation about world building, Maurice, and I think we may have touched on this in a in a podcast in the past. But 
to go back to what you were saying about over world building is, are there, I mean, obviously there are pros and cons with that, but you're saying that you are writing other things within that world because and, and is that a direct result of the overworld building or what's some advice you can give to people who spend a lot of time world building that may not show all of that, all that work within their pieces. Right. So this is the lesson. I call it the pimp my airship lesson. <laughs> right. So uh, when I, I sat down, I wrote pimp my airship, the short story in 2009. And, uh, and I way overdid the world building, which was fine. I, I, I tend to prep a, Almost as much for a short story as I do a novel. I mean, if that tells you anything. So, I mean, I overdo it regardless. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to overdo my world building. <laughs> and so uh, and so, I built this world uh, for Pit My Airship, told this 5,000-word short story in Pit My Airship. And then while, while it was well-received, the main criticism was we could tell there was a whole world here that we only got to see a glimpse of. Mm-hmm. Which is true, because I was only being paid to show you a glimpse. <laughs> so. Um, but the fact of the matter is I had created this whole world. And so there were elements in the, in the short story, which were, they weren't really, I, I don't, I don't want to say they were throwaway lines, but they were just part, they were lines designed to show I have thought through this world. There's a lot going on mm-hmm. in this world. Uh, da, da. So I, you know, so when I say something about, you know, the, the, the Jamaican empire and, and, and hints about the, what, what, go, what's been going on America being at war with Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Well, that one line, I can come back and then I wrote a story called, uh, actually, I think it was a novelette called Step and Razor, where I then mm. went and explored that one sentence. <laughs> I go back and explore the, what, what that sentence mean. And so that one sentence turned into a novelette. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I mentioned, the, you know, that there's a nation state of, of, of Tejas uh, in the book. Well, now I can explore that in, in Buffalo Soldier, my novella Buffalo Soldier. So yeah. I do this work that is way overdone, but then I can, but then the world's already built. Right. So I can keep coming back to the well and just keep telling story after story after story. So um, my story that just came out in a uh, magazine of fantasy and science fiction, uh, uh, Babylon systems. Uh, that's, that's the story that takes place right before my novel, Pit Meyer ship, the novelization. And, but that's okay. the last story to take place right before the events that happened in, in the novel. And so, so my advice would be, I don't know. Don't follow my example. I don't know what my exact advice would be, but uh, it's just that I love world building. And so yeah. the fact, once you've built this world, though, there's no law that says it just has to go for one story. Uh, in fact, let me now let me flip it to talk about uh, Sweep of Stars. So with Sweep of Stars, yeah, um, I had a short story collection called uh, Voices of Martyrs. And uh, and it's divided into stories in the, set in the past, set in the present, set in the future. Um, and it was those stories that said in the future where people started describing me as this Afrofuturist. Um, and then I, and I was like, okay. So I, I kind of found that in the back of my head. And then I started writing some other sci-fi pieces. And then as I sat down to write a uh, sweep of stars, I was just like, man, what if, what if all of my sci-fi stories are all in the same universe? And so now sweep of stars becomes sort of like that unifying book that yeah. says, Hey, all the, all those different bits of world building again have not gone to waste, but now <laughs> let's unify it and work through all of that in a really systematic way. So now it's like, oh wait, now all of these, all these stories are all in the same universe, um, which is great, and it, it it adds a layer of depth and a layer of <laughs> some convolution because then I have to really think through how exactly these are all tying <laughs> together. But that's that's all part of the fun. I mean, I'm a comic book guy. Right, yeah. so I've been doing comic books for for decades, and like this is all part of the fun, the whole puzzle of the of of the superhero universe. It's like, oh no, I can I can come back and do this all day long, right? And that connectivity and all that that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we derailed your questions enough. Go ahead, my, buddy. My bad, Will. <laughs> no, it's it's really great. This is what I wanted to happen. I want to read a section of the book for a minute. And it's uh, as soon as you open after the timeline, which I'm going to get back to in a minute. um, The beauty in blackness is its ability to transform. Like energy, we are neither created nor destroyed, though many tried. And it's a West African proverb. I feel like this really, um, really sets the whole tone of the book. Did you decide, did you read that? 
and said, I'm going to put this in the beginning of the book? Or did it come after you were actually um, finished like the first draft of the book? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things I discovered in the midst of writing the book. Because uh, I'm writing the book and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very cognizant of the themes I'm wrestling with, right? And then, but there's like, how do I, how do I keep cementing this? How, how do I keep putting this, you know, uh, in, in front of me in a way that, that makes sense? And then when I ran across that, that proverb, I was just like, oh, oh, this is perfect. Because uh, not only does it summarize a lot of the stuff that I'm wrestling with in, in the book, but then it also broadens this conversation because, like I said, this is a pan-African uh, community that I'm trying to build. So it's not just, you know, the uh, American diaspora. It's, you know, it's, it's, di- it's all of the diaspora plus the original continent. And so trying to build together. So this is a, a, a multi, a multi-lens conversation I'm trying to have. And that, that quote sort of brings all of the things I was thinking about together just in one fell swoop. You wrote all these stories uh, with, you know, certain character um, viewpoints or when you were trying to figure out a part of the novel. So are you going to do a collection of uh, short stories in this universe? Are you going to put some of those stories in the next two books? Um, How expansive do you see this universe? Uh, The universe itself is expansive. Um, and, and it only keeps getting more expansive. The longer it's taken me to write the deck, the trilogy itself. So, uh, I'm, I'm currently working on book two of the trilogy. And so far I've written, I think two more short stories, one, two, three, three more short stories that take place in this world on top of it. So, uh, if this, <laughs> if this book takes me another year or so, I mean, if the, entire trilogy takes me another year or so to write. I mean, we could have another, you know, half dozen or so of stories that take place in this <laughs> universe. So uh, I, the original plan was to have uh, each book have a couple of the short stories in it. Um, but then uh, the books have, uh, if nothing else, have turned out to be um, larger than uh, I think we originally planned. Um, Sweep is not a small book. Sweep is, Sweep is the longest thing I've had published. Oh. And let me tell you, the sequel, if it stays on pace, will be longer. <laughs> uh, and so right now, I'm, uh, the thought of doing a collection really appeals to me. I would love to do a collection. Um, again, just so y'all can see how hard I've worked on this thing. It's, <laughs> this has been a labor of love, a labor's labor of love. And, uh, and like I said, I've, so far there's been, uh, I think, three... And, but I mean, a lot of the stuff has been published. It's just not been collected. So, I mean, I, I think I have three novelettes so far that's been published. Um, probably a dozen short stories, whether people realize it or not, uh, are all all out there. So it, it, it hopefully one day we'll see a collection of tie, that, that brings everything together. Nick? Okay, so do you, this is a big question. Okay. Um do you foresee Sweeper Stars growing big enough to where you've got the world built? That you go, hey, here's my world. Let's do an anthology and let me invite some people to write within this anthology to oh, go along with everything else that you're doing. Oh, yes, because, because you know, I'm not very busy and I don't have any, I have so much free time. So let me think about another expansive project I could launch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it has crossed your mind, judging by you know, your reaction. Only because, like, I, this whole weekend, I've been thinking about the whole idea of a shared universe, mm. and uh, and been like really warming up to the idea of a shared universe. And so, uh, so the short answer is no. I've not thought about it. The larger answer is, oh man, I'd love to get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to get there. And the other people play in the universe and give their interpretations of things. Oh, oh man. I, oh yeah, I'd love that. Because I, mean, I think I would, that's, I would I think, too. I, and I think that's part of why what I want going into the book is this whole idea of this book I see as a, a stirrer of conversations. You know, it's like, hey, here's some possibilities of how we could be and how we could live and how we could do this together. But this is just one man's vision of it. I mean, if it's going to be a conversation, it needs to be an actual conversation. So I'd love to have, like, say, African writers 
uh, pop in and play in this universe. Some, some of my Caribbean writing friends, like, come in, play in this universe. And, you know, I, I, what does this conversation look like? You know, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Nick, don't give me ideas. I don't. <laughs> man. Like, can, can like I go? You, you don't have friends in the industry that could help or, you know, <laughs> help people help you organize it or anything like that. Right. <laughs> I, want, I want to go back to something you said, Maurice, too, about um, about how some of your short stories were going to be in it in the in, in the novel or in the sequel. But then you're saying now the book is large enough to where you you, you may not include them now. I, I, you know, there are other authors out there that, you know huge sections of their book are side stories and stuff like that. And they're very expansive deals. Like, is that something like that you don't want to do something that you're, that is not part of your agreement for the book lengthwise, or is it just not something that you foresee for, uh, for this trilogy? And I'm only asking because again, there are plenty of authors out there writing these giant epics with a bunch of stories in between, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think part of the, the the risk was, I mean, this book because I do so many POVs in the in the book. Uh, they were like, like, there's a lot going on here. Let's not okay. add <laughs> add to that. Uh, another you know, layer, yeah. Another layer. Mm-hmm. Um, you've given them plenty, and then, but then I really uh, the idea of just doing a standalone uh, collection just in this universe really has a strong appeal to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm just like, yeah, I, I could do a special you know, collection just of this universe. Uh, but I don't know when I would do that because like I said, I'd have to be done with book three uh, only because then I'm no, I would know, all right, I'm done with book three. There is no more stories. I need, I personally need to write in this universe. Let me move on to something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so once I get to that point, then I'll know, okay, I'm done. But like I said, just in working on uh, the sequel, I've like, I've already written three stories and I wrote them out because I, Spoilers, kind of, not really, but uh, I needed to figure out the magic system in this book because mm. uh, come book two, the magic system is going to play more of a role. So it's like I need to figure this out, and there's only one way I know how to figure stuff out. And it's like uh, I end up. So if I've written two short stories to try and figure out the magic system, I might have to do a third. So okay, makes sense. Does All right, it? well, back to you. <laughs> I don't, I, it makes sense to me as somebody who. I feel like I have similar problems where, you know, I just I have all these ideas and I write stuff that are interconnected and I'm like, well, I'll do something with it. But like, I got to explain this at some point. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm, I'm with you. All right. Well, sorry. Back to you. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. My next question is I have a lot. You described it as a black empire, but you even said that doesn't really describe it. It's the closest word that you can like use for the masses, right? Um, I want to talk about being unapologetically black. I was talking to a lot of my friends who are black. <laughs> um, obviously, Those of you not benefiting from the video feed, as Will is talking, Maurice just stood up and his shirt literally says unapologetically, unapologetically black on it. So Will wasn't looking, so I had to say it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't even looking. (laughs) And really, like, you know, um, I was talking to one of my friends who I work with who's in the public eye, and she said, you know, being unapologetically black means not worrying about the white gaze. I'm not here to seek approval for white people. I'm not here to... um, make myself smaller to be a safe black person for them. I am here to be my full authentic black self. Talk to me like you you stood up and you have that shirt that says unapologetically black. So talk to me about when you were writing this um, empire, this new culture, this way to a look of the future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think, I think actually, I think that's always been part of my journey. I think, you know, 20 years ago, Maurice, you know, did try to make himself small or did make himself small, you know, wanting to fit in, not wanting to make waves, you know, just trying to get the, you know, these, these stories that are rattling around in his head published. Um, and so this whole, 
becoming, you know, appearing and, and showing up and showing out as my full self, you know, that was, that was its own journey, to be honest with you. Um, and it took finding the right communities to, to be a part of uh, that would support me and, and would love me and would know, would know me, would love me, would, you know, accept me, would celebrate me. So, um, so I think that's an important part of our, our of, well, of my journey, but of all of our journeys, to, to be honest. Um, and so, there's this been this at least with me personally as a writer, I've just been sort of growing into this whole, you know what? Hey, there, there's a certain amount of fearlessness about it. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to be me, and if it if people accept it, that's fine. If they don't, you know what? I'm surrounded by people who love and accept me, so I'm good. So I'm, I'll survive that. So I'm, I'm just going to write what I'm going to write, and so. For example, with the, uh, like I said, I, I don't use the word empire. Like I don't, I don't even know if I use it in the story because one of the elements of the story is this whole mm-hmm. idea of deconstructing empire. I, I don't even know if we, they refer to themselves as a colony, if I remember right. Because that was one of the things I was trying to be very conscious of is like this whole idea of like, no, no, because if you are a colony, that means that you are a colonizer. And what does that mean? You know, there's a whole set of implications uh, to that, so I don't. I, I try to stay away from all that language. Not, not kingdom, not uh, empire, not colony, um, unless I use it in very specific instances uh, for very specific effects or to drive home that that point. Otherwise, I'm going to refer to it more often as a community. You know, where, where are we? We're we're in a community, and 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 that's what we want to be about. And that's the ethos of, of how we're going to move through through the spaces we find ourselves in. Um, because part of the idea was, uh, uh, and this was part of our challenge or part of the challenge as, as I kept having conversations with people is like, you know, can we imagine a future outside of the lens of the oppressive systems we've been under, uh, outside of the long shadow of, of history? Um, can we, can, can we create things on new terms? And that was, that was actually a, 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 a very, that was a fraught conversation that I ended up having with, with several folks in, in the community and, and in different spaces I was in, because these are all the things that, you know, that we're considering. But then at the same time, it's like, and even with that, with that in mind, it's like, and yet, and yet we're going to create on our own terms and we're going to live on our own terms and we're going to be on our own terms. And that's why that's what I wanted to create. And then, frankly, the threat that represents, <laughs> you know, because sometimes our existence as our full selves in and of itself it, is a threat. So I want to talk about that for a minute, because you're right. When you talk in this book, you actually use community as the basis for this newness, the way that they're going about living in our solar system. And my question is, do you think it's going to take us getting off planet to actually have new systems be imagined? And this is a part, this is two part. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you kind of answered this in your book, sweep of stars, but I'm also wondering how do we writing is so much about narrative, right? And about seeing the future in totally new eyes and breaking the chains of the past. And this is why it's so important that we see all different types of representation in the future. Do you think as human beings that we're able to learn lessons and go out into the universe without being destructive? Oh, Will. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I don't know which question to tackle first. Well, your second question is literally the theme of book two. So I don't want to talk too much about it because, but I will say this. One of one of the questions I keep asking myself is, what does it look like to take this culture you've imagined, this culture you've been a part of, and bring it into all the different spaces you find yourself in? And that's literally the big question that I, I'm, I'm wrestling with in, in book two. Um, and some of the, and frankly, some of the characters wrestling with it in book one, they just don't realize it. Like, how, how can I, how can I be me in all the spaces I find myself in? So, so that's that question as much as I can answer it right now, but it kind of ties into the answer for the first question. Like, do we have to go off world? Well, I, no, part of, part of all this is, uh, so if me working in community right now in 2022, Indianapolis, I'm working, I'm working at the grassroots level, you know, do, doing, you know, working with nonprofits, working with students, working with, uh, you know, different folks in the community. Um, 
there's there is something I'm I've got to be working toward. Right. I can't just be working just for the sake of working. No, I'm working towards something. And so part of part of Sweep of Stars is giving me a vision of what it is I'm working towards. Right. So it's, it's there. Literally part of his job is to help cast a vision. So I go, OK, so now, uh, you know, I have this vision cast in front of me. Um, my uh, the people I'm working with, you know, they, they've been reading drafts of this along the way, too. So, you know, they have and they've been involved in some of the conversation. So it's like, no, no, this is. This is a vision in front of us, a, a possible vision that we could be working towards. Um, but if we're working towards that, that means that can start now. Right? I could, you know, the, the way the education system works in, in, in Sweep of Stars, you know, wait, we could we could pilot some of that now. You know, the, the way that we appreciate each other, the way we see each other, the way we celebrate each other, we can we can do that now. And so, uh, you know, do we have to wait till we go off world? My, my short answer is no, we don't. Now, <laughs> the reality is, will it take something near world ending in order to <laughs> force us into places that where we like, hey, maybe we should go about the way we do things a little differently? Well, <sighs> that's also a possibility. It could be a pandemic. It could be global reshaping. It could be any of a number of things uh that 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 forces to that point, but it shouldn't have to take that. You know, we mm-hmm. should be able to value each other starting now and, and build our systems starting with valuing each other. We could do that now. Okay. So my next question is I'm just taking in everything that you're saying. It makes oh, no me worries. think a lot. Um I want to talk about black excellence for a minute. Because black excellence is a lot of times um, joined with capitalism in our culture. And I want to talk about the communities that you've built seem so um, connected, I would say, over tradition and seeing a future vision for themselves. Can you talk about that? Because I specifically want to talk about the naming ceremony that I found really, really beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, man. So again, these are things, uh, man, well, (laughs) so again, some of these questions I'm thinking about for book two, very specifically. Um, but, um, (laughs) actually when you ask that, when you started to ask that question, I kept thinking of this thing from, uh, Bill Campbell. He's, uh, uh, the the publisher of, uh, of Rosarian books. He, he's the, 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 the publisher over there and uh and and we were on a panel together and he was just like man you know what i'm working towards i want a future of black mediocrity you know where we don't have to be excellent to burst through can we get can we get to mediocrity but you know <laughs> right now we all have to just be excellent in order to do what it is we want to do um and so i so <laughs> so I don't know. That's just one <laughs> thing i always think about when, when we have these conversations because it's true it's like it is, uh, yeah because, you know, growing up, you know, I, I think about, you know, what my mom would, would always say is, uh, you know, I, I have to be twice as good to get half as far, you know, or and then when I had that conversation with Bill, he's like twice as good. Oh, man, your mom let you off easy. I think his number because uh, he asked me what my number was. And I said twice, too. And he goes, yeah, my number was four. Uh, <laughs> I had to be four times as good. So, yeah. So, I mean, these these are all things. And, and you're right. You know, that whole idea, you know, that isn't. You know who who who's setting up these sort of hurdles and barriers that we have to be twice as good or four times as good in order to get into the you know in order to break through? Yeah, it's all that's all tied to to, to capitalism and supremacy and things like that. So it's just like, uh, yeah, what if we chose not to play? <laughs> the end. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have to do that. I, I'm, you know, what? I'm good. I'll be over here, me and my mediocre self, loving my neighbors working with people I love. I could, I could just go do that. I don't, I don't have to play your game and I definitely don't have to play your game on your terms. That's a, that's a losing proposition from the beginning. So it's like, yeah, no, I'm, uh-uh. I, I don't believe in playing rigged games or at least games that I haven't rigged in my favor. So I, I just choose not to play. So I don't know if that answered your question though. <laughs> I think it does. I mean, I want, I really wanted to hear like your, 
thoughts on it because I think I keep leading into these questions in book two because your book, Sweep of Stars, I've read it 11 times right now. Oh, um, I and read times. it really, it really made me think. Well, one, it, I'll tell you why. It made me think because of what I'm writing. Because I told you, like, when I, I'm writing like a space opera and the same thing with you, you made me feel a lot better when you told me like you break out into the character's voice when you need to know more about them and the world. So I feel good. So no writing is wasted. Um, (laughs) But your book just, your book really just made me think about how you thought about the way old society, our current society and the past from the 21st century is going to affect the future Mm -hmm. and how we build off of that and how we imagine newness. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that's what I automatically think about like these conversations because it just spun a lot more questions for me and for us. Yeah. Go ahead. You go. Uh, Oh, well, so I I think about something like the naming ceremony, which is what the book opens up with. Um, And and it touches on, on, on several key points. So one, there's this whole idea of, of traditions, you know, what role does tradition and ritual play in society? Um, because for me, it's it, it's kind of like story. You know, if we if, if we have a story that we're telling about ourselves, that story needs to be reinforced. I mean, that that's just. I mean, life in America. You know, as I, I look around, you know, it's not so much that we are in love with. Uh, uh, oh man, I'm about to go down all sorts of rabbit trails. But uh, you know, are we like the you have these conversations like, oh, well, we, we, we just want, you, we want history being taught. Da, 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 da. No, you don't want history being taught. You want the myth being taught. That's what you want. You want to teach the overarching meta narrative that we've preached to each other or that you've preached to us. Uh, you want that being told and reinforced because that's the story of who you think we ought, we are and who we ought to be. And, and so I, you know, and that, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. It's just with uh, in this what I'm I'm I'm, ta- I'm I'm talking about and I'm writing about. It's you know what? We want to move by a different story, and that's what it all boils down to. We want to move by a different story, and that story is one. You have the greater story of Muungano, so that's going to be one level of that story. But then there's the individual story. We each have a story, right? Um, and on all these things are you know, are tie, are rooted in the past. So with the naming ceremony, people have been given names. Your parents name you. That's the name they've chosen for you. You didn't have a say in that. <laughs> That's the name that was given to you, um, which is fine. But there comes a point where you get to start determining your own story. And when you have come to that place of, I am determining, I have determined, I'm ready to determine my own story I'm ready to choose who I am and how I want the world to uh, interact with me. That's the naming ceremony. It's like, hey, I'm stepping into this space as my full self. And the community, what's the community do? The community gathers around you to celebrate that and welcome you in. Like, hey, we want your full self. We're here to support your full, full self. That's that's the naming ceremony. You know, this also makes me think about ageism. Weirdly enough, because I think a lot of times we think um, you're you're going to break out in your 20s or 30s. But I want to ask you a question. Do you think Sweep of Stars would have sold 20 years ago? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I'm asking that, though, because, you know, in our last interview, when we were talking about um, – uh, world con and you said you know if all I wrote was like pit my airship and like I feel like I had a really great career mm-hmm. and I and I kept thinking about well I'm glad that's not all you've written because while I love all like Buffalo Soldier the Knights of Brent Court and and um, pit my airship I feel like you're just getting warmed up I feel like when I think of your career Maurice like I followed you since I first read your short story over 10 years ago like I would seek your stuff Mm. out. And I feel like in a lot of ways, it's twofold of reason why I think for a really long time, I never saw myself in any story, you know, and I grew up like in a really, um, I grew up basically like in a black community. Right. And I never saw my friends 
reflected in any of the stories. So the more specific you got with your journey, the more I felt like I really, like it became really universal, right? Um, And the fact that 20 years ago, it wouldn't have been even looked at or um, thought of, what do you think of breaking out now later in life? Are you, um, does it energize you or does it make you wish that it happened 20 years ago? Or is it both? Uh, You know, sometimes I dream about uh, what it would have looked like for me to be writing these stories and having this level of success 20 years ago. But then I also realized, yeah, 20 years ago, I probably would have ended up dead (laughs) in in my, in my, we'll just say celebratory ways, uh, probably would have killed me. Uh, I would not have survived my own success 20 years ago. So there is that. Um, But I mean, I look at something like, uh, like uh, Usual Suspects, you know, my middle grade book, right? So it Mm -hmm. came in in uh, 2017, it came out in 2017, and it sold in 2016, but I, you know, I wrote that as late as uh, 2012 was when I first wrote that book. And I knew in 2012, yeah, this book's dead on arrival. No one's buying this book. No, no one's touching this book. And that's 2012. So I know if I'd written Sweep of Stars, you know, 20 years ago, I mean, there's part of me that would dream that, uh, ooh, it would have hit the market at the right time. And, you know, there was a vacuum there and, it, and I could have had big success with it. But I also wasn't that man 20 years ago. I, I, I'm a 50 year old man reflecting back on his journey and looking towards the future. Uh, 20 years ago, Maurice, <laughs> man, how, man, what I've been 30. Oh man. 30, man, man 30 year old Maurice barely knew who he was. I mean, talk about making himself small. If I would have tried writing this when I was uh, at 30, this would have been a very small book. Hmm. Uh, with having totally different conversations. Uh, now, if I could like somehow transport, you know, 50 year, 50 year old Maurice into 30 year old Maurice's body in time. Well, that's a different conversation, but um, yeah, I could only have written this book. Now uh, the books I'm thinking about now, I could only have written now. I, uh, I was just in a different place. And that's one of the things I, I liked about that uh, collection uh, voices of martyrs. I'm, I'm, literally in that collection I'm, I'm watching my journey as a writer and as a person and i could literally go through that book and go oh i see what i was struggling with there and uh, you know all, all these different points uh in my life and in my writing so uh so i knew who i you know so so yeah it was yeah i couldn't have written it then but uh but you're right I, there, I, there there's parts of me where i'm just like oh man i got so many stories i want to tell now so many stories I want to tell now. Um, and, and and I feel like I'm writing like a madman. I feel like I'm writing like a person who possessed. I mean, I tell people all the time, I feel like I'm writing like I know I'm about to die because it's just like, oh man, I got to get this in. I got to get, I got to get this in. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm battling myself, but that's <laughs> fine. I got stories to tell and I'm, I will just keep telling them. The, uh, the other advantage though is, you know, as a 50 year old, man or 50 plus technically uh year old man who's been in the game 20 <laughs> plus years uh it also means some of these stories aren't I, i'm I, i'm better and faster at telling them so I'm, I'm still capable of like getting more stuff written in a shorter period of time and that's what i'm uh i'm also enjoying that too so there, there's a trade-off Oh, I have so many questions for you because every time you answer something, I have like five <laughs> more questions I want to ask you. But well, I, I want to throw out there how right much now. I appreciate your answer to the questions about when you write things and how how old you are when you write it and telling those stories with that experience under your belt because it gives us a little bit older aspiring aspiring writers um, the hope. And we've talked about this before. It's like you know yeah. I'm. You know, I'm 42 years old. I feel like I have stories to tell, but like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, yeah. I it, it gives yeah. us, it, it, it gives us the motivation. I feel like, um, for our community, which I appreciate. Yeah. So thanks for saying yeah. what you say about that. Yeah. We have, when, uh, when Kingmaker dropped, it dropped in 2010, you know, I was 40, 40 mm-hmm. years old when my first novel comes out. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, 
I love it. I hear you. I hear <laughs> you know, it's just, you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, and I'm just going to keep doing it while I'm still here. As yeah. long as I can draw a breath and, and a pen still fits in my hand, I'm going to keep going. Indeed. All right. Sorry, Will. I got y'all. Okay. I have two more questions. Um, the one is, what is your vision for Sweep of Stars? What do you want to happen when it gets released? I want it to be a conversation starter. I mean, if, if I'm, I'm really being honest, I want it to be a conversation starter. Um, I want it to be a conversation about the, the reflects on the work that we do in communities. Um, I want it to be a conversation about, hey, how are we moving and in, in being in, in these spaces? And what does it look like to not play according to capitalist rules you know, what does it look like to just, you know what, we can, just, we can, we can literally just opt out. We can just collectively decide, you know what, nah, we're just going to do this a different way. Um, what, what does it look like for me to talk to my Caribbean brothers and sisters and my African brothers and sisters and go, hey, you know what, we've been separated by by this caste system. We've been separated by the by the rules of supremacy. We've been separated by the rules of capitalism we can be in conversation with each other. We can build together. What could that look like? So ultimately, yeah, for me, it's like, what the, the vision, I want to impact culture. There we go. No, nothing, nothing too large. I just want to impact culture and conversations. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, okay. Wait, I just have one other question, Marshall, before I get to my final one now, All right, because buddy. you're just All making right. me think Maurice. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, when I thought, when I read Sweep of Stars, it also really made me think of Nello Hopkinson, mm. of Midnight Robber, because of the way that she built that Caribbean um, society, right? And the way she uses language. Mm -hmm. And I want to get down to the way that you used language in the book and the way that you created names and the way you created the world. Where did you draw that from? Was it was it hard for you? Was it something that was like at the tip of your tongue? Like, what was your process like with that? Um, so uh, I, I drew from a lot of places. So uh, one, I drew from history because a lot of the names have historical significance. Um, mm -hmm. Two, I drew from my local community um, because, you know, we do have some founding uh, families uh, here in town where that uh, they're part of that sort of a black nationalist tradition. Uh, and so I, so I drew from, from them and, and their stories and, and their names. Um, I explored other cultures, um, different names from, from different African countries. I drew from them also to, uh, to again, so that, you know, cause like, Hey, by the way, Africa is a big place. It's not just one, <laughs> it's not just one country. Um, there's a whole lot of different cultures represented there. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, different cultures got a nod, you know, at, at, to show that, no, we're trying to build something together. Uh, so, so I'm trying to draw from a bunch of different places. I'm trying to be methodical. I'm trying to be conscientious. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted to be thoughtful about it. Thoughtful and respectful. Okay, so I actually just have one more question and then the oh. final question, I promise. <laughs> you know, I really, Marshall, Nick, and Brent couldn't be here and he sends his love. He was really sad he couldn't be here. Originally, I really wanted to go in this because I really want to read excerpts of the book and really like dive deep. And I was really thinking about this today because Marshall and Nick didn't get to read it and Brent hasn't been able to read it yet. I was honored enough and humbled enough that I got early arcs of it, which I'm eternally grateful because I just love, you really inspire me just as okay. a writer and a human being. Thank you. Um, I would really love to have you back whenever you have time to actually do a book club session with you okay. where all of us could have read it and we can really dive deep into the book because there's just so many questions I have. And I know Brent and I know Marshall specifically will really love this book and have lots of questions in it. And I know Nick is going to have a lot of questions in it because, you know, those three are like world builders and character driven writers, you know? So if you have time in the next couple of months after the book's been out for a little bit, if you can come on and do a book club, no pressure, Maurice, to answer right now. 
did did Will not hear me say okay like right off the bat? <laughs> no, I did. Um, <laughs> we, Apparently we not. Really, I, we just want to get you on as a regular co-host. Just, <laughs> we just want you. Yeah, here, that's really keep through the line, Tim Right, right. <laughs> because there's this there's a section of the book that I feel like is a really big turning point and kind of made my jaw drop. And I would really like to discuss it, not only as like, just as a fan, but also as a craft perspective. And I think uh, my co-hosts will really, really love, I know they're going to love this book, but I know they will really want to ask some questions. Okay. Um, So there's that. Um, So thank you for saying yes, and we'll plan it soon. Um, (laughs) And my next question is our last question. Okay. Um, and usually we, I'm going to be very book specific. What is keeping you, um, right in this world? And I know you've answered that a little bit, but like, what do you think is really the, 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 the pull as an artist to really build and write in this world? Yeah. Um, so I could be crass and go the three book deal I signed. Because I know that's part of my wife's draw to this book. She's like, oh, hey, are you on that line? Are you on that line? Because, yeah, we we could use that next payment. Like, okay, I got you. Um, So, I mean, don't get me wrong. That is is actually a a legit pressure that's out there. But the thing that keeps coming back, honestly, it's, it's like with all of my writing. There are questions I'm asking myself that I want to answer. And, uh, and so like, I'm like right now, there are very specific questions I'm asking about the sequel due to the events of, of what happens in sweep of stars. Uh, and two of the big questions, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with is again, what does it look like to carry your culture wherever you go? Um, which is relevant to the characters, but you know what? That's relevant to me too. Right. Cause I find myself walking in different spaces, um, spaces that would love for me to be small like spaces I refuse to be small in anymore. So it's like, so what does it look like for me to carry my culture with me no matter where I go? So that's a question I'm asking myself now. And it's a question I'm sort of working through in, in my writing. Uh, the other question involves this whole idea, this concept called elite capture, which will be a whole thing down the road that we can talk about. But that's the other question I'm, at, I'm thinking through in terms of, you know, what does it look like to be, what does it look like to be co-opted from your mission, right? That, that you think you, you're about, you're, you, you think you're about this thing. You think you're building this thing. And yet there are going to be forces. Like I said, forces are always going to be tearing us down. But sometimes these forces and the, and the methods they use aren't, you know, aren't always just bombs and trying to blow us up. <laughs> right. So now what does it look like to have to weather these other kinds of, you know, quote unquote attacks uh, and, and these other ways of people just co-opting you and co-opting your mission or co-opting your language. And then finally you just realize I've been totally co-opted. They co-opted me in pieces until I'm totally co-opted. Um, so what draws and so what draws me back to what keeps me writing is being alive <laughs> and paying attention uh, to my life and the world around me, and uh, and continuing to ask ask myself questions and to continue wrestling with questions. Um, that that's what keeps drawing me back. I mean, right now it's taking the form of this uh, Astro Black trilogy, but this trilogy, you know. Ideally, I'll be done writing at the end of next year, which is not true. I'm going to blow that deadline. I'll just put that out there now. <laughs> but uh, ideally, <laughs> that, that's where we're, where we're supposed to be at. Well, even once that's done, you know, I'm still going to be asking myself questions. And the answers for that, they might be short stories that take place in this world. It might be me going, hey, you know what? Time to build a new world. So, so yeah, that's what keeps me writing, uh, being alive. Awesome. All and, right. And so again, thank you, Maurice, for being on the show again. Um, just super quick. I know you've been here before, but where can be where's the easiest place for people to find you on the interwebs and such and to find your work? Let's see, I am a a brand conscious guy. So uh MauriceBroadus.com, but like uh, is is my one stop shop. Well, one stop one stop location for for uh, where you can find me and, and my work. But uh, if you go to Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, I'm all I'm Maurice Broadus wherever I go. I am me wherever I go. <laughs> Perfect, and we'll have that in the show notes. Thanks again for being on the show. We appreciate You're you. Absolutely welcome.
<laughs> and this has been Just Keep Writing, a podcast for writers, by writers, to keep you writing. You can find us at justkeepwriting.org. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Feel free to reach out to any of us on our social medias, and please jump in our Just Keep Writing Discord channel. Links to all of that is in the show notes. Lastly, please support our show by going to patreon.com slash justkeepwriting. We offer daily writing prompts, early access to podcast episodes, and much more. Thanks for listening, and just keep writing.